Bible says, ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen. The heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost part of the world for thy possession. God the Father talks to Jesus Christ in Psalm chapter 2 and verse 8. Yes, God the Father speaking there, and He's speaking to His Son, Jesus Christ, and He says, Son, ask Me. Ask Me, and I'm going to give you the ends of the world for thy possession. I have to believe that Jesus Christ asked Him. Well, there was many... It was many years ago I was reading that and God Himself spoke to me and said, David, ask me. Ask me. God was telling me. And I started ever since that day to pray, oh God, I want the death of the uttermost parts of the world for my possession. Now I want others too. I want hearing people as well. But there's few people that have a burden for the deaf the same as I have. Now there's some. I have some, some, some brothers in Christ, some, some friends that have a burden, but there's not many. I want to thank you as a church for allowing me to come this week and spend time with you. Pastor, Pastor Turner has been very, very gracious and helpful, even through our emails and calling. It's been a wonderful blessing to spend time fellowshipping with him. And you have a wonderful pastor. And let me tell you something. You know this. But he really does. More than a lot of other past pastors that I know have a heart of a pastor. Amen. Amen. And, and you have to you have to thank, praise God and thank God for him. Yes, amen. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of pastors. I meet a whole lot of preachers. And, and, and his his heart is just it just I know because my heart is the same and it's like we identify like mm. we're right there together and I really appreciate that. Also, I want to thank Charles. He's still sitting over here. Now I'm going to tell you something that Charles knows, Brother Turner knows. And he, he still he still knew. He still knew working with the deaf. But his heart is not new. That's right. That's right. His heart is tender. I've spent time with him. I've known him for a few years. And every year, every year, he calls me three, four, five times. And we talk for an hour or more. And he asks questions. And I answer, and I help him, and I count, and I pray with him on the phone, right? And his heart is tender. And I was telling, I think I told Brother Turner, I personally, myself, I would rather have a man whose sight language is still new with a heart that's tender. Than a man whose sign language is skilled, but his heart is cold. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. And his heart is not cold. That's right. Amen. It is really tender. And I think it was before, but as I think about it, I'm thinking maybe it's because he spent so much time with Brother Turner. <laughs> you know how it affects you? Right. So it's been it's been my joy to be with him also, and to see his love for the deaf. And 
also, Byron, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to meet you. And, and, and Gretchen, is your sign name what? Gretchen, Gretchen, Gretchen. It, it's, it's a joy to meet you too. And I'm really sorry that the other deaf are not here. We tried, didn't we, to get some others to come tonight. But it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy work working with, with the deaf. Um, but it's the same with hearing people. You know, there's others here. Brother Knapp back here. I just, I just love his smile. And he just, just to talk with him, it's just it's like in a second, in a minute. I mean, you're, you feel like you're brothers for a long time. <laughs> and Brother Ramon here, I just, I, I just love it. I, I, I do. Yeah. It just, it, it just, I don't want to leave. Mm. Can I stay? <laughs> um, very good. Thank you as a church. Thank you to you for, for loving the deaf also. For allowing the pastor time and helping and paying bills for interpreters and, and helping Charles and supporting him. I just want to thank you as a church for doing that. That's important. He, he, he needs the, the encouragement. Right. Needs it. He needs your prayers too. Yes. They told me, I think it was Byron told me, that there's 7,000 deaf in this Vancouver area. 7,000 deaf. And there's not many other churches that have ministries with the deaf. And there's only one deaf church here, and it has a woman as its leader. Mm. So you can kind of guess what kind of church they have over there. And how many deaf are in that, in that church that told me, I think, 30, more or less? About that. So there's many deaf that still have to be reached here in this area mm -hmm. for Christ. Ask of me. God has given me one ministry that's special. I take teams of people to big, big deaf events. The Deaf Nation World Expo, the first time there were 23,000 deaf and friends of the deaf there. 23,000. The second one there were 16,000, a little bit more. <clears throat> Two deaf Olympics, one in Taiwan, one in uh, Bulgaria. And in both of those, there were probably 20,000 deaf and, and, and other friends. And then there were many, many hearing people who, who lived in those areas that we reached with, with, with the gospel tracts also. But we've seen the, the first time we saw 11 people saved in Taiwan. Amen. And the gospel went out. Right. One of the DVDs that we had handed out in Taiwan four years ago, one of those DVDs landed in the hands of a man from Kenya, Africa. This July, we went to Bulgaria with another team. I had 20, 27 people with me, and, and we gave out thousands of, of, of DVDs and tracks. Just many, many. And one of our men was standing, passing them out in front of the, the, the big uh, stadium, the, the biggest stadium in the, in the country. And he was passing them out to the deaf as the deaf would come along. And he'd smile. Here, it's for you, it's for you, it's for you here. It's free, it's free. And one man walked by, big tall guy, black, from Kenya. He walked by, he got it, he kept walking. He came back, he says, I've seen this before. And he was asked, well, where did you see it before? He says, I don't know, but I have one of these. And then my friend from, from uh, Arizona, Don, he said, well, we gave them out in Taiwan four years ago. Yes, yes, Taiwan. I received in Taiwan. I just threw it in my bag. I took it home, and I just left it over in a, in, in a corner. 
over here. I just kind of left it over there for a long time. And one day I was bored, thinking, what am I going to do? And I remembered that DVD. He says, I went and picked it up. I came back. I put it in. And I sat and I watched that DVD. And I was saved. Hey, Amen. Hey, there were 11 saved there. How many were saved later? We don't know. Heaven will tell. Yes. The second event, we had... Let me remember which one it was. Okay, 11. We had uh, 36 saved. Amen. The third one, there were 21 saved. And the fourth one was again 36 people. No, 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 12. 12 were saved. Amen. 12. So those are just four events. Amen. Now, we have missionaries, and I'm always searching for new missionaries to come and help us reach uh, other uh, parts of the world. Um, we have some, some new people that are just joining even this year. One couple couple's going to England to, to establish ministries over there. Another couple is going to Gabon, Africa, to establish a deaf church over there. We have a, we have a lady going to uh, Romania, Romania to, to help churches over there to reach deaf people. She's already been there. The others have been there. But there's a need to reach deaf people around the world. I'm going to show you a quick uh, uh, just presentation from Bulgaria. It's, it's fairly short. You're going to see pictures of deaf people from around the world. And I trust and pray that God will speak to your heart, even through this. And then we're going to open up the Scriptures uh, for a few minutes and, and, and preach and, and make our point.
Hey. Opening your Bibles to Second Kings. Second Kings, please. Chapter seven. Second Kings, actually chapter six and seven. Almost all of the pictures you saw there were deaf people from around the world. I know Ahmad even noticed the, the team from Iran there. It was a pretty good sized team. And they all received DVDs. Some received tracks. We had thousands of tracks that we passed out. This is just one type of ministry that, that we have with Silent Word Ministries International. We love people and we want to reach them now. Amen. Verse, chapter 6, verse 24. I'm going to start there. We're just going to read a little bit, then we're going to jump. I'm going to explain some things, and then after a little bit, we're going to read over in chapter 7. And it came to pass after this that Ben Hadad, king of Syria, he gathered all his host and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they, that army of Syria, they besieged it, and until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a cab of doves dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king, help! And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor? Or out of the, the wine press? And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This, this woman, this woman said to me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him. And I said to her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. Let's pray. Father, we have a terrible, terrible situation here in Scripture. It happened a long time ago, but it's terrible. <coughs> but the situation that we face here in Vancouver and Canada and America and around this world is even more terrible than this one. Oh God, help us to see this situation tonight. The awfulness of the situation what's happening in this world. And we see it on TV. We see it around around us there at, at college, at school, at high school, at work. Oh God, but help us to realize what we need to do about it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ben Hadad and his army had come and here was Samaria. And they besieged it. They surrounded it totally. They were strong. No person was going to come out. And no person was going to come in. Their food supply kept getting lower and lower and lower and lower. Until they didn't have any real food. So they started eating other things that aren't really food. Now, I call that perversion. When you start 
you're eating dog's dung, and you're selling it for $40 for, just a second, let me look here, one half pint of dove's dung, $40, and then you're going to eat it? And, and, a, and an ass's, a donkey's, a donkey's head is $480 for one head. And, and then they kind of pick at the meat, and then they eat it. And they probably ate it fast because they were starved to death. But it got worse. These two ladies, they didn't even have the $40 for the dove's dung. The only thing that they had left were two babies. So one says, give your son, we'll eat him today, and tomorrow I'll give you our son, and we'll boil mine tomorrow, and we'll eat my son tomorrow, okay? Okay, they were starving to death. Now they weren't missing just three meals and feeling inside, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. No, these, these ladies probably have been fasting and not eating probably for 30 or 40 days and getting close to the point where you die because of real hunger. A mother doesn't kill her baby and eat it because she missed three meals. Right. So they took it. Here's the baby. They put it in a pot. They boil that water. And the flesh just comes off. And they eat it up. In fact, one baby didn't even last two days. It says that they ate that baby all in one day. They were starved to death. Now tomorrow, your, ba your baby, your son's time. Give it here. Oh, my, my baby's gone. Where is it? I can't find it. Yeah, right. Like that baby crawled away and hid, right? And so the woman cries out to the king, Oh, king, help us! And the king up on the wall, walking back and forth, just looking at the situation. It's like, how in the world am I going to help you? If God can't help you, how are you going to ask me for help? And then in the next verses, the king says, I am going to kill Elisha. Like, you're going to kill Elisha because of these women and because of the situation? And if you look and you study chapters 3, 4, 5, and 6, you'll see how Elisha was already used by God to save yes. Samaria. Yes. And now the king's upset with Elisha. He said, I'm going to kill him. And he sends a, a, a messenger to go talk to him. And Elisha tells his friends, Elisha, he says... The king's going to send a messenger to me. I know, I know, I know what's going to happen. Now, because of time, let's get forward. In chapter 7, verse 3, And there were four leprous men at the entering end of the gate. That's of the city there, Samaria. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? Okay. Um, Ramon, uh, I want you and I want Antonio. Come here, please. I need you too. And I need... Uh, Brandon, where's Brandon? Brandon, where are you? Come here, bud. Right back there. And, uh, Pedro, where's Pedro? Yeah, right here. Okay, on the front. Okay, come here, guys. We got four beggars here. Don't they look like beggars? Yeah. All right, over here. All right. Okay, now, the first lesson about a beggar. Beggars don't smile. <laughs> <laughs> Don't 
<laughs> Serious. Actually, it has to be sad. Put your hands up. Everybody, we're beggars. All right, we're beggars. We're sitting at the gate begging, right? Okay, all right. We're sitting at the gate begging. Okay, it's getting better. <laughs> so now they're begging. And, what, and, 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 and do these beggars have money for the dove's dung? No. How about the donkey's head? Even less, right? I mean, that's 480 bucks. The, at least the bird's poop is $40. <laughs> you know, excuse me, but, you know, that's, we call that vernacular. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, so we have four bankers and they don't have anything to eat. And one of them's a little bit smarter than the others. Not much, but a little bit. <laughs> and, and he says to the others, What are we doing here? We're going to die here anyway. See, they want some food, so they're going What are we doing here? We're going to die. Let's go, guys. Let's see if, if maybe they'll have mercy on us over there in, 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 the, in the enemy's camp. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Oh, come on, guys, let's go. Ramon, I beat you too. Come on, guys, let's go. The best thing's time is going. Hey, where are you going? It's over here. Some more. Now what are you going to do? No, you're not. 
No, I know you sleep a lot. But then, anyway, you got to get some more clothes and gold and silver and hide it again over here. Some more. Come on, more, more. Hide it. Let's go. Let's go. That's Greg, man. And this guy knows what he's doing. Good, 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 good. All right, now come back and start to get some more clothes and gold and silver. you got to start again, third time. All right, all right, Brandon. <laughs> Brandon stops says, hey, guys, come back. Wait, 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 wait. Wait.
There's clothes and gold and silver, all these things. They're out there. They're free. The army is gone. And all the people, they go out and they fight. Okay? Thank you, guards. Sit down. All right, you beggars, you can go back to your seats now. Make sure you take your food and gold with you. <coughs> Good job. One, one obedient beggar. But there was one man who didn't believe it, and he told Elisha. He said, there's no way that we're going to eat tomorrow well. And when all those people, they went out, the Bible says in that chapter 7 that they stomped on this man and he didn't reach the food and he died. And the other people, they reached the food and they lived. Now, the key here, and my point is this, look at verse 9. Verse 9. Read it yourself. Read it. Verse 9 says, Then they. Who are they? Who? Those four beggars. Okay? Lepers. They were sick. They were going to die anyway. With food or without food, they're going to die. And they said one to another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. And we hold our peace. Folks, Canada and the United States and this world entirely is in a mess yeah. and perversion and hunger yes. and thirst and people dying and people doing strange things like killing their own babies hmm. inside the womb right. and things like that. Right. There's so many, many strange things that mothers do today and fathers do today and boys and girls do today. There's, there's just so much perversion and homosexuality and lesbianism and, and on the list goes. And you can, you can fill it in and add to it. But we at Anchor Baptist Church have good tidings. Amen. Yes, sir. Good. But the problem is that too many of us are holding our peace. And we're holding our peace. We're not telling anybody. Shame on us yeah. for holding our, our peace and not telling anybody. There are so many people around here that need Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, we have a church here. It's wonderful. But how many people out there know about a wonderful church? Mm. And why is this church wonderful? It's because of Christ. And with Christ comes the riches of heaven. And, and the riches of grace here on earth. Right. But most people are out there and they're still, still, still suffering and suffering and suffering without Christ, without hope, and without help because we hold our peace. And 
deaf people around Vancouver, they need Jesus Christ. Hearing people need Jesus Christ. I'm not telling you you have to go and reach deaf people, all of you. I'm just saying that there's people around you that need the Lord. Okay. We've heard it and 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 we've heard it many, many times, even Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We've heard it again and again and again. But my question is, hearing it, hearing it, hearing it, and still sitting, begging, and not telling, and going, and eating on Sunday morning, and Sunday night, and Wednesday night, and through the week you have your Bibles and you read it, and you study it, and you pray, and then you go, and you hide it. Hmm. Because you don't tell anybody about it. And you can eat and eat and eat and eat and you become fat. And you need to use some of your energies, some of your calories, spiritual calories, to go out there and get some exercise and tell people about Jesus Christ before they die and go to hell. Let's pray. Father in heaven,